Welcome back to Frost Education, this is Ed. Today we're going to be talking about Wish, the ticker W-I-S-H. The company name is Context Logic Incorporations. So in hopes today I'm going to be giving you a due diligence news and then followed by that technical analysis and what I think about this one. So without further ado, let's jump right into this one. So Wish. Almost everyone on this planet have heard with on Wish. Anyone who has really any access to the internet have heard about them before. They're more off somewhere similar to an e-commerce structure that is similar, I think, to eBay rather than something like Amazon, or at least from what I've seen. Uh, could be even closer as well to AliExpress. Now, for Wish itself, it currently trades around 1140. It has around 2.5 billion dollars of 2020 revenue, which is around 34% increase year-over-year -year growth, and around 107 million 2020 monthly average users at a 19% year-over-year growth. They have around 2 billion dollars in cash and cash equivalents, with more than 550,000 uh, merchants and more than 50,000 location partners or local partners. And it covers more than 100 countries. Now, a good thing to start with is the presentation that they do have here. So in the presentation, first off is exact information I gave you, which is which is snapshot. And some of the quarter 1 2021 results, including around $772 million, there's around 75% year over year increase. Gross profit of around $443 million at almost 60% margin with a net loss of $128 million, which includes $389 million in $44 million of stock-based compensation and related expenses for the quarter 4 2020 and quarter 1 2021 respectively. Now you get to see that these changes are applied to this graph itself. And adjusted EBI TDA is around negative 79 million dollars at a 10 percent loss in margin now quarter one results exceed high end of guidance on revenues and adjusted ebi tda with the total revenue growth accelerated from quarter four to 75 percent year over year with the core marketplace on revenue growth being 40 percent year over year accelerated from fourth quarter 2020 with the core marketplace revenues per active buyer increased around 76 percent year over year with product boost revenue re uh, return to year-over-year -year growth and logistic revenues increased four times year-over-year. -year. Adjusted EBI TDA improved year-over-year -year and over quarter quarter. Now the next thing here is the investments highlights. First off, massive and growth economy, uh, massive and growing opportunities in mobile e-commerce. Around 2.4 billion or trillion dollars in global mobile e-commerce is expected by 2024, which is almost closer to a double or 1.1 trillion dollars additional from 2019. Focus on large under underpenetrated value conscious consumer groups. More than 1 billion households worldwide make less than $75,000 in income annually. And diversified revenues via services geographically. Uh, geography around 46% from Europe, 40% from the US. Services include 72% core marketplace, 20% logistics, and 8% advertising. Strong data science advantage with cost-effective user acquisition focused on high LTV customers proprietary logistics platform, faster times to deliver with lower refunds, and scale platform with engaged global user base around $100 million MAUs or 100 million MAUs across 100 countries. Now the next thing here is the global e-commerce, which is a massive and growing market. In 2019, you saw that to be around $3.4 trillion. And by 2024, it's expected to be around $6.3 trillion, well, mobile is expected to grow to 71% of e-commerce by 2024. One, more than one billion dollars, or sorry, one, more than one billion people in the world or households have l money or annual income being less than $75,000 a year, for excluding China and India. Now, number of households with annual income being less than 75,000, that's around 60 million in the US and around 300 million in Europe. Now, another thing here that I do want to pass on is the consumer experience uh, that is driven by intellectual property and proprietary uh, softwares by Wish themselves. And product boost advertising amplifies a merchant reach with around more than 65,000 daily active merchants, more than 680,000 daily active products, etc. Now, the merchants get access to comprehensive suite of services, including demand generation, data intelligence, UGC creations, logistics, and business operations. 
Now, there are also more than 90% of the packages that are shipped through Wish proprietary logistics and platform. Wish performs all logistics services for approximately 50% of the packages representing a large growth opportunity. Now, next on to that, um, Wish Local creates opportunities for brick and mortar partners. So basically, if you have more of a local store, you can also still sell on Wish into Wish Local. Now, there is other things, including their financial highlights and some of the revenue increases. For instance, the 2020 logistics revenue increase is almost three times more that year over year. And with the revenue itself, you get to see that on average, they have around 78% uh, CAGR. So that is amazing. And the MAUs is around 39% uh, as well CAGR. Now, in terms of increased engagements with high LTV customers, you're also seeing an increase on every kind of count. So that's all bullish. The question comes in, where do we see, where do we see this company here into the next few quarters? Now the current revenue here, currently the adjusted EBI TDA guidance for quarter two, 2021, you're looking anywhere from 60 million loss to 55 million loss. In terms of revenue, $715 million to $730 million. The current year over year growth is anticipated to be anywhere between 2 to 4%. In terms of long term financial targets, they're trying to get a revenue of at least 25%, with gross margins of 70 to 75%, and adjusted EBI TDA of positive 20 to, 20, uh, 20 to 30%. So there's definitely room to grow there and really stride towards uh, trying to get towards that positive net revenue. They've done it before once, but it looks like it's been only most, most of an anomaly rather than a reoccurrence. Now, the next thing here is they do have a lot of partnerships with either community, volunteering, charity, etc. For instance, this is for Black Girls Code that was announced back on February 8th, 2021. It's more offer publicity in that sense. Their current IPO was actually priced at $24 per share. And also, they have strategic partnerships with South Africa Post Office that was announced back on April 21st, 2021. And the aim for that is that average 50% faster transit times, end-to-end -end tracking visibility and delivery confirmation with customers to receive bundled shipments for multiple times, and SMS and physical notifications on delivery awaiting collection. Wish also announces partnership with leading e-commerce platform Presta Shop. They have around or at least two year deal with French based CMS will provide over 300,000 merchants with access to Wish Marketplace. So that's definitely a positive thing. Um, moving on as well, we get to see a bunch more regarding their revenues, etc. But from there on, we need to look into institutional buyers. And before doing so, if you would like to see more contents like this, make sure to click that subscribe button on the bottom right corner. There should be as well a bell notification button right here. Make sure to click that. It helps my channel a lot. Don't forget to as well drop a like. And if you would like to join our Discord, all you have to do is click show more and join my Discord totally free. Now, from the institutional buyer's perspective, we see that June, or at least the 1st of June, a lot of these index funds, including Vanguard, added this one. Back in May, you see that there's a lot more activity in institutional buyers, mainly bullish than bearish. Now, I don't see massive names kind of pulling out in that sense, but the general sense, I would say it's more shifted towards bullish than bearish, but there's still activities going both ways. Now, the price of her book currently is 667. The market SP500 average is around 5. Price over sales is around 230. The market average is around 4. So, there is room to grow in the price over sales and room to catch up on price over book, uh, more of a downside. And in terms of the EPS this year, they did meet, well, I'm not sure even if these things are accurate, but for next year, it's around 60%. And for the next five years, it's around 76%. Now, Moving on from there towards technical analysis. Now, from a technical analysis standpoint of view, you're starting to see that the moving averages are actually trying to pierce into, or the price point is trying to pierce into the 50 SMA line at the 1147. The current moving averages were almost always bearish for one reason. This one has really took a beating from almost $33 all the way down to $752 in just a matter of few months in a bullish market, in a bull run. Now, the ADX is currently around 39.28, suggesting that there actually might be a potential for a move or a push. The MACD is positive and so is momentum, suggesting that there is actually more of a, a positive momentum push for this stock. And that's definitely a bullish thing. The willing percent R is actually neither overbought or oversold. 
Again, a very bullish indicator. The stochastic fast and stochastic slow are both telling you there is very much of a potential of another leg up. And take a look into volumes. Volumes have skyrocketed in the last few days, specifically in the last five days. Now, the Bollinger Average Bands, which is a momentum-driven band, is between 1134 on the top and 672 in the bottom. Now, on the Fibonacci retracements, you're seeing a significant resistance level at the 1350, 1720, 2018, 2317, 70, 2742, and 3285. The current support is sitting at 752. Now, however, we can start going on with Priceline action. We see a very strong support sitting at the 993. Below there, we're looking into the 865 and below there, 769. The current resistances, you're seeing one at the 1117. Above there, 1201. Above there, you're looking into 1357, 1545. Going upwards to 1813. Going up to 2009. And then 2004. And then upwards to 2672. 2796 and then going to 2996 and then 3285. Comes to the question to head, what do you actually think about this one? Is this a meme stock? What's going on? Well, I do definitely think that they have a lot of potential. There's a lot of buzz. A lot of people have known or have heard about Wish. It really broke this channel, that downward channel. And I do think that they have a lot of potential. Um, which has come more off with competition with AliExpress, eBay in almost no time. And it is itself sometimes used as a meme. So, you know, you buy something from Amazon versus Wish and you get the crappier version. <laughs> but nonetheless, they still have a lot of potential and for a lot of things that actually really works. And they have a good kind of brand and brand recognition and brand uh, exposure, all that kind of stuff and partnerships. And you do think that this one will strive places. Now, in terms of fundamentals, it's a little bit mixed, but I would say it's more on the bullish side than the bearish side. And the technical analysis is more on the bullish side than the bearish side. Now, I do think that it, ha it has a good chance to reach 20 bucks within the next five years or literally just become a very much of a basic penny stock. Either or, but I don't think it's going to be anywhere in between. But at least that's my opinion. What do you think about the sticker? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like, and have a wonderful day. Now, if you made it this far into the video, I do recommend that you go ahead and join our Discord server. There's a lot of amazing folks in here. Uh, we do a lot of discussions here into the trading floor throughout the day. A lot of people are in there, and we do ask questions. You can ask me uh, any question you would like on there. Uh, we do post research and DDs, and we hold weekly uh, chat sessions. And we also do have a lounge in there. So make sure to actually join that and join the fun there. Have a wonderful day and a good one.